A young man stands in his bedroom. It just so happens that today, the 13th of April 2009, will go on for three fucking years. Name? John... No, wait, that's not right. There we are, John Egbert. Your name is John, and today is your 13th birthday. Because many great men die on their birthday, and only the good die young, you have legitimate reason to fear for your life. You should arm yourself for the occasion. Okay, wise guy. You catalog the arms into your Silodex. Not that those words mean anything to you. You're pretty sure that your Silodex is some sort of inventory system, but you've never really understood it. You just leave your stuff's fade up to Lady Luck, who you like to imagine is played by Liv Tyler. You're sure someone is keeping track of things for you. After fumbling around with the metaphysical UI, you nail your brand new Little Monsters movie poster onto the wall. Too bad both the movie and poster are terrible. In fact, all of your interests are trash, including this new game your friends want to play with you. Speaking of whom... Sup, egg nerd. Got your mail yet? Ah, uh, are you gonna start hounding me about the game too? Nah, I have different machinations. Though, if you're looking for more mechan and less Asian, Pisha TT is on the hunt for someone to play with. I think she even considered asking her mom. Wow, that's desperate. Yeah, you should go fix that. Message TT. I'm here to quench your gamer thirst. All right. Did you already install the game? I don't have it yet. Just message me when you do. Retrieve mail. You head downstairs and are instantly sidetracked by the giant presence in the middle of the living room. You unwrap it and... Uh, Maybe you shouldn't have crumbled up the wrapping paper. Through sheer clumsiness, you manage to dip the fake arms into the cake and then stick them onto the mannequin. You prop it up onto the couch and pray that Dad won't bat an eye. Not that he could. Go outside. You make your way to the front door and immediately go the opposite direction to explore your dad's study. After stealing his hat to update the disguise you're wearing for whatever reason, you take a moment to play a dramatic piano refrain. You stayed up all night learning that one. The perfect use of your time. Enough dillying and or dallying. You head outside to check the mail. And dad already got to it. All right, time to become an orphan. You momentarily trick your dad into thinking you are a stranger, or he's just pissed that you took his hat. Who cares? The time for rational thought has ended. You immediately resort to violence. Your dad dodges the physical, as well as verbal, assault. He tells you to blow out the candles and eat. Ugh, you are sick and tired of him and his cakes, birthday or not. Jokes on this joker-loving joker, you came up with a backup plan. It worked like a charm. You safely retreat back to your room. Looks like your chums are pestering you. Open Discord. You hover your cursor over the Discord logo and immediately click on Pester Chum. Hey John, I had a nightmare about having a kid with TT and I need to talk to someone about it. Hey, did you get the bunny yet? Wait, shit, how do you delete messages? The bunny? Like from Con Air? I'ma start freestyling about Obama. Why? So, will you be retrieving the game today? Or should I consider selling my soul to one of my many tormentors? I retrieved the game! What a pleasant surprise. I genuinely expected the apocalypse to come sooner. Install game. So, what's this game about? I'm 20 walkthroughs in, but I still haven't fully figured that out yet. It's like The Sims, but unintelligible in an entirely different way. But I do get the general gist of it. Deploy devices, grab totem, and carve. Carve? With the machine, John, not the razor. Hey Rose, this buzzy thing, it's screaming fake words at me. That's the Colonel Sprite. It's loud is what it is. Would you feel better if I drop something on it? I don't think you should hurt it. It's called prototyping. Now it's screaming fake clown words! This is way worse! John, this is very much not what you should be focusing on right now. Oh, right, the carving. Done. What next? Well, according to one unintelligible walkthrough author, you put the carved totem onto the alchimeter, and it does something fun and wacky to it. Probably. Really, it depends on if you survive the meteor shower that seems to be cutting all of these walkthroughs short. Like in the video game, right? Technically. John, why is this the state of your bathroom? I got sidetracked. There are several whole cakes in the toilet. Very sidetracked. <sighs> I'll fix it. That's the sound of cleaning, right? Yes. Um, I'll just... I can save this. <sighs> Damn it! BTT, you are now tentacle the... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope. Name? 
Rose Lalonde. She's too serious to participate in a name joke. In fact, she's such a square that she'll probably skip every side quest to speedrun saving her not boyfriend. Okay, or not. Guess she still has time to fuck around. Using your god-awful tree fetch modus, you gather your things and begin your perilous quest for a better Wi-Fi signal. To your utter shock and horror, it turns out that standing in the open air in the middle of a thunderstorm doesn't increase the Wi-Fi signal. Fortunately, your visit to the observatory was funded by the sponsor of today's video, Cetus VPN. Need a life raft for the raging torrents of the internet? Cetus has you covered. Using your new VPN, you're finally able to access the dark web without your mom finding out. Oh, and you're also able to reconnect to the game. Should I give you and Liv some privacy? Are you still cleaning the bathroom? What about the meteors? Don't worry, they're still on schedule. Yay! Escape room. What am I supposed to do with this? John, what do you normally do with apples? Do I throw it at the meteor? You know what? I genuinely don't know. Go for it. 